I'm like, we didn't even get through a third of what we planned. I know. Oh my God. Okay. Wait. So, so there was this like amazing comment at the end of the chat. I, I like don't really remember it again anymore, but um, it was like, I wish that there were an economic analysis of different games where games could be placed on a spectrum from like socialist to capitalist. Did you see that? That probably exists. I'm like, I'm trying to think of like, I mean, like that's why it's called game theory. Like people, like that's where game theory comes from. Like the, the creators of game theory were just like, how do we figure out how one could, like all the iterations of how one could win different like basic games like tic-tac-toe, right? Yeah. Um. So I think maybe some like, I am like, I think maybe like somebody has done that. If not, that'd be really interesting. Mm-hmm. Wait, so what, what's OpenAI's theory on games? Well, okay, so. <laughs> Well, the, the, when I was reading the comment, it made me think about how OpenAI has this whole thing where they, you know, they did that um, paper that came out with the giant simulation of agents that are competing in hide and seek. Mm-hmm. And their their theory is if you scale up the simulation and have lots of agents competing in these ways, then it'll, like AGI will emerge. <laughs> That's like the general premise. But it's a very, like, even if that worked, it it would be based on a particular incentive structure, right? Exactly. So that was like one of the critiques that people started having, which is like, you're assuming that intelligence comes purely from competition and you're like designing it based off of a competitive game structure. Right. And then it just like calls into question all of these other, I mean, almost every game that um, AI has been trained on. Mm-hmm. It, oh, like that has actually it. always been my take like why why are they always picking these zero-sum game games like like yeah. a game in which it is to like conquer to battle if I have something you don't have something like animal costing is interesting because it's like it is meant to be collaborative play I do better if I give stuff to other people like yeah. that's kind of the point like as much as I'm kind of making fun of like all the capitalism like there are like parts of where you are supposed to make the, the you're supposed to like pick weeds like and sure you get like nominal like money for it but like the whole point is you want to have like a pretty island so you get voted really high and you're supposed to talk to your neighbors every day and like give them gifts and then they give you gifts like teach yeah. the AGI that like teach it reciprocity yeah it is so interesting there was this other um at one point I think there was a google effort to try and use AI to be not beat but like learn how to play um i'm forgetting the name of this game it's a japanese game that has fireworks on the cover do you know what i'm talking about i'm gonna look this up i feel like they should teach ai to play stardew valley um yeah i I think that's the weird thing like my weird take on animal crossing is like but you do you're doing all of this for someone else so there's like this weird like why are you teaching future generations that you always have to be like working for the man? (laughs) Whereas like Stardew Valley, you do the same stuff. You like farm, blah, blah, blah. But like, you're doing it for you. Cause like the whole story is like, you live in big city life and you want to escape. And like your grandfather had this farm and then he died and he left it to you. And like, you move to this farm and it's in this tiny little town called Stardew Valley. And you have to like learn how to, you know, but it's like, you're doing all this stuff for you. Whereas in Animal Crossing, it's like there's this weird subtext, so like Tom Nook owns the island. So he's like, hey, so, uh, you know, uh, we could use some bridges. And it's like, why don't, why don't you take the loan for this bridge? And uh, you're like, what? So the game that I was talking about was Hanabi. Have you ever played Hanabi? No, I've never played Hanabi. Oh, I, I think you would really love it. It's like this card game where you you can't see your hand but you can see everyone else's oh cool! and like the goal is to work together because you have to collaborate to like achieve yeah the goal. i forget yeah. what the goal is but i think you have to like create a certain number of pairs or something with your cards but the you're only your the people who are you're playing with can communicate to you about your cards but only implicitly like they can't literally just say these these are the cards in your hand but yeah, they'll yeah. say like oh, like you two, like I see a match or whatever. Um, Mm -hmm. And there was this Google effort to try and get AI to learn that game. I don't know what ever happened to it, but it was like the first collaborative game that I'd ever seen in this whole AI game. I mean, because if you think about it, like higher human functions are not based on our ability to kill each other because then like (laughs) lions or whatever, sharks would be, you know, it's actually based on our ability to collaborate because as weaker and smaller creatures like some 
I'm reading uh, Bill Bryson's The Body, which is like kind of fun and entertaining. It's like sort of, so I really loved when I was younger, um, Bill Bryson's book, uh, A Short History of Nearly Everything. It was just like super entertaining. Like yeah. it's just like a walk through science kind of, like all of science, which is really fun. Um, and the body is just like about the human body and just like, and it's so fascinating and like how we've like physiologically developed and how many millions of years it took. But then also like fundamentally, we are like weak little things. Yeah. And ha how have we built like cities and computers and, you know, what we would call advanced thinking is actually our ability to collaborate. So the episode, like I listened to it like while I exercise. So I was running today and I was listening, actually listening to interestingly about like the human body and like how we're built a particular way. And, you know, and they're like, uh, like what really worked for us is like our ability to throw and like our joints, our shoulder joints are totally different, yeah. but it's because we learned to corner animals that were bigger and stronger than us um, and utilize what we were good at, which is like throwing or like running long distances versus in sprints or whatever. Right? Yeah. The point is like society was meant to be collaborative. That's what took us from hunter gatherer to agrarian sedentary and agrarian sedentary is literally why we have culture and technology and all the things we would consider quote advanced. So it's bizarre to actually use zero sum games because that's literally how animals live. Animals live minute to minute zero sum. Human yeah. beings actually live in a highly collaborative environment or we're able to achieve because of collaboration, even if our narratives don't reflect that. I wish people actually talked more about this. Like, I think that this is like, I, I like rarely ever hear people talk about the fact that games, the way that people approach training AI in games is like. We're writing a book, Karen. This is <laughs> <laughs> it's the only AI book I feel like I have, I have valid opinions on. <laughs> We're just going to be like Animal Crossing. <laughs> like, let's let's talk about Tom Nook. But like, really, that like he has this like whole like infrastructure of people, and there's there's this like weird like constant surveillance. So you're always being judged and assessed. So you get this assessment from something called quote the Happy Home Academy, and you don't know who these people are. You just get like you get like an, a, a, a mail from them. Like you never meet these people. They like assess like how big your house, they literally give you positive points if you own more things. So it's like, hey, like get useless crap and stick it in storage. And it's funny cause like, I'm, not, I'm like, dude, like I'm not one to like sit, like these games also tell you about who you are, like fundamentally, like what you prioritize. So many of my friends were saying that. Like a hundred percent. So like Stardew Valley was one I got super into. And um, what I realized was I prioritized like my workaholic self, right? So Stardew Valley is really interesting because you're supposed to live like a full life. Like you're supposed to get married, for example, and like have children and like, but you're also like farming and you're fighting demons and you're going into mines. Like all, oh, it's like a really dynamic game. Uh, but I found myself, I, I prioritized building my farm and like getting all the like achievements and, like every once in a while your grandfather comes back like his spirit and he kind of like judge, like you know scolds you and i kept getting scolded because i wasn't married and i'm just like fine i'll go find someone to marry <laughs> so i went into town and finally made some friends oh my god these games like they accept so much they really do like shoot like okay not that i want to give like any creepy ideas to people but if you really wanted to get at like behavioral like behavioral analytics just study how people play these games like you don't need to do emotion detection i know exactly how someone's going to act in most situations based on how they act in in uh in like animal crossing and stardew valley so uh you know and he's got like his thomas has weird enforcers like it's like isabel who's like super nice but she's like, oh, you know, your island has one star. And, um, you know, so she's like the ultimate, like, middle management. <laughs> then there's, like, Timmy and Tommy, who are simultaneously, they're like, like, you know, if, like, they're like the, the Kafka, like, beer, bureaucrats, where they're simultaneously exploited and exploiting. So they were apparently these, like, little tanukis that Tom Nook took as orphans, but they also, like, do is dirty work so they run this store called nook's cranny and you're supposed to sell stuff and i swear like not that i like keep track of like all the prices but man like sometimes they're quoting me these prices and i'm like that's not how much i was worth yesterday is it so um i don't know <laughs> then there's this tailor shop owned by this like hedgehog named mabel and her sister sable is like constantly like sewing stuff and i'm like it is like a full sweatshop setup where like if you go to like talk to her she's like i'm busy she's like so mabel's just like hey how are you 
what's going on? And like Sable's just like, <laughs> God, so she's like, God, so. And I'm like, Dang, it's, it's, are... it's teaching our kids how society is, you know? It's, so one thing I actually found really fascinating is um, you have to learn nonverbal communication with your friends when you're playing because it's kind of annoying to type into the switch. So like, so what everybody, universally, what everybody does, I don't know why, like everybody does, when you go to someone else's island, for some reason, we all like run in a circle really rapidly. <laughs> It's this universal greeting. We're just like, we. That's so. I don't even know why. But like, we all just, you know what it is? I think it's because like the controls, the way they are, like, this is really like intuitive to like spin this thing around. But it's funny because it's like, just like, I'm not going to be like, hi, like, Emily, da da da. We just like show up and it's like, we. And then like, interestingly, like, going back to like human cultural anthropology, the next thing we all always do is give each other a gift. Like, I don't know why it's like, yeah. And even if you're just like dropping, like here's three fruit. Cause I like showed up at dry land and like someone else, oh, like, you know, there's no, there's no like words exchanged. You spin in a circle and then like drop some fruit or something. Amazing. Yeah. It's really, it, I think you're right. Like, I think it would be really interesting to understand. Like I, I would be genuinely surprised if someone hasn't taken like at the very least like the Sims and like understood how people yeah, interact. Yeah, I'm sure. I, well, I'm sure there's like entire, at game game design conferences, I'm sure there are entire like sessions that you can attend about how to make Maybe. realistic and stuff. Maybe, I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I think that last gonna be really cool. Like let's take these different games and like put them on a spectrum <laughs> of like, like more, like it's like, and like you can put on like a political, like there's like the very like libertarian killer be killed kind of games. And then, like, you know, to, like, the purely collaborative, like, everyone's better off if we all work together games. Yeah. And then there's the ones that fall in the middle. I don't know. It'd be, uh, it'd be really interesting. I someone watches this video and then does it. Like, I, I hope this I is hope so. session inspired. I, I, get, I actually, I, I, would, I would promote the hell out of that paper and I would read the hell out of that paper. So, <laughs> and I would, I would make sure to reference it at least once in every talk. Animal Crossing tells us about life. 